Hello everybody, welcome back to the Gen 8 build series. In this video we're going to be upgrading a couple things on the Red Cat Gen 8. These are the two primary issues um, I wanted to address first as we go through the build. Uh, this build series may not be your typical build series in the order we do things or the way I do them. I'm personally doing them as to what I see needs done first and foremost. Uh, as well as giving some tips and tricks along the way. First we are going to do the high clearance skid. Um, I've had this skid in my possession since the first run of these. Uh, it does come with uh, the lock nuts and there is a million and one videos of this out on how to install this but we're still going to do some of it so you see it. Uh, if you have any questions you can YouTube it. There's other people that have put it in. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, something that we're going to do that's super high on my priority list. If you remember uh, from my my in-depth review of the Red Cat Gen 8, the drive shaft was out of phase. Uh, two of my three drive shafts were out of phase. Well, as promised, I promised you I would get with uh, Dixieland RC and uh, come out with a drive shaft upgrade kit well that's exactly what we've done I gave Dixieland RC dimensions of the drive shafts and he got kits in he also got individuals if you want to do like for this build series I got the short drive shaft um, I wanted to do it while we did the skid plate it just made sense to do it at the same time the part number for that you can see it in the screen and you can also see the length of it 51 millimeter to 56 millimeter pin to pin um, and honestly the it's basically uh, I think it's like 52 millimeters if I remember right the actual measurement of the factory drive shaft which is right here this is my out of phase uh, transmission to transfer case drive shaft so, as you can see, out of phase. So, we're going to go over replacing that. Now, that drive shaft comes with some spacers, as you see here. It also comes with a little customization you can do. You can either have these smooth outers, or you can have these, I uh, guess you could say, possibly a little bit more scale looking outers so these will not work with the factory skid or they won't work at the transmission side of it either because the clearance how wide this is from this point to this point is too much uh, you have clearance issues. These ones here are slightly smaller in overall outside diameter. That's what I wanted to say. Your overall outside diameter, this is slightly too large. This, just perfect. And it's a nice smooth surface for rocks and small little pebbles not to jam into. Something else I wanted to call out big time. I'll have to pick that up. Is, if you remember, I talked about why this drive shaft was all plastic and it had to do with the the design of the molds that they used to put metal into them well if you look at the, this one here this is a good heavy duty drive shaft this will last and we look even the lengths of this okay this is all metal all right and if you look and see we are end to end and look where my drive shaft smallness look how much more I have okay all that is the distance that these yokes from here to here is essentially taken so what that gives for these aftermarket ones since they're running a smaller 
distance between and still got plenty of rotation available. What that's doing for us is giving us more contact patch, more surface area, more strength. So we end up with a nice durable small drive shaft that uh, fits our need perfectly. And um, now the big thing you gotta be careful of is you have to phase this drive shaft yourself. It is not keyed, which is fine. That's, there's nothing at all wrong with that. A lot of drive shafts are that way, but there's zero problem phasing it. As you can see right now, it's perfectly in phase. So, not an issue. Just pay attention while you're doing it, and we're going to do it live right now. So, for this, you will need a two millimeter wrench, a one point five millimeter wrench. Uh, some blue Loctite. Uh, I use gel a lot in the RC stuff. I find that it's not quite as strong as even regular blue. Um, it just seems to come undone. Slightly easier, but still holds perfectly well. So, let's dive into this. One tool I forgot to talk about, it was laying on the table, but I didn't mention it, was uh, just a cheap set of needle nose pliers. You'll need these. Um, nothing special, I just have a few cheap sets laying around, my quality ones are in my work vehicle. But uh, just the cheap ones, get lost, doesn't really matter. You will need them. Now, you will see, um, since I already talked about the drive shaft, uh, the drive shaft's removed, my transfer case, as well as the battery tray that goes on here is removed. Uh, don't worry about that, we'll cover that on the reassembly. I figured I'd just leave it out to cut some time out. So we're just going to go ahead and for transfer case for the time being. We're done with it for right now. So you'll have to remove it obviously whenever you go to do yours. The first thing we're going to do is remove our upper links. That's where you need most pliers will come in handy at this point and another point down the road here. So You can remove them screws, set them off the side. You will reuse them, so don't lose them. And we're not going to be flipping the truck too awful much. Uh, we'll here and there, but uh, try to keep from doing it because that just say it takes up a lot of time. So I'm just going to try to work around. You might see my hand from time to time. That's just the way we're going to roll with it. So basically, the same thing that's happened on one side is happening on the other. And remove this upper link. And uh, if you remember, I reused these uh, tracks or the uh, Red Cat Gen 8 ball studs whenever I did my uh, D links. And uh, that has been working flawlessly. I've had zero problems. They work smooth. Um, everything seems to be functioning, so I'm leaving them the way they are. So now that that's done, we can flip it upside down. So need to remove their screws here, 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 and here on both sides. So you can just kind of work from the back to the front, front to the back, middle to the outside, it's however you want to do it. There's no right or wrong way of doing it. Um, essentially they just need to all come out. Just be careful working around the screws where the the slider rails come down. Um, sometimes they kind of push your uh, wrench off to the side. So just make sure you get a good uh, contact with them. The two inner screws as well as the two outside screws are the same length. So you can't really mess them up. The outside screws, you can just kind of back them off and leave them lay in the uh, floor plan pan there. And they can just kind of hang like I have this one, because you're going to reuse that. And of course the ones that are going through the lengths, because uh, this screw goes the whole way from here, the whole way over here. Uh, they're long screws, so you can't honestly mess any of this stuff up. So, 
Have no fear. You will be just fine. I got to work around the tripod at the moment. <laughs> That's my hang up. Still learning good camera angles and where to put the camera and lighting and all that stuff. And to be honest with you, I don't have time to mess a whole lot with it. So uh, sometimes it just ends up being what it ends up being. Which there's nothing wrong with that either. So props to all them uh, YouTubers that do do the editing and stuff. Uh, man, does it look amazing! Uh, so well put together. There's so many of them out there. I can't even mention them all. But uh, it's definitely impressive. Maybe one day I'll get to that point. I'm uh, not responsible for torpor tunnel surgery either. Uh, kind of go through the screws pretty quick. <laughs> so kind of part of it. Uh, I need to get the, the MIP bits for my uh, battery operated drill. That way I can save a lot of time and a lot of hand aches so I can. This is one of them ones that I told you about with the angle to it. You could probably pick that up in the camera pretty good. Uh, to make it easier if you wanted, you could undo the slider, uh, just this side. The other ones don't mess with it, it's just this one. And if you undid them screws, uh, that slider would move all around for you, you wouldn't have no problem. So, alright. If you noticed why I was doing that, of course it's hard because it's moving around, but I mentioned in my uh, review about the frame rails not being super strong. Uh, they have a little flex to them. So they're not super strong, they're kind of, they're in the middle somewhere, they're fine, nothing wrong with it. But uh, it makes this extremely easy. And the uh, big thing about the links is just pull them straight up. Uh, you can't bend or angle them at all because they will catch. So, all we got to do is take, put a little pressure, pops out, pretty simple. Um, you can see mine is all beat up. I've spent a ton of time stuck on this. Uh, I also spent a ton of time stuck on these. These things are absolutely terrible. And you match that with that, and you got a whole lot of terrible. So during this series video, we're taking care of this, as well as the drive shaft. Uh, most likely the next video we'll be taking care of this as well. It'll be in with that. So, that's coming along the way. Now, our new skid. Nice bottom, very little uh, to catch on, and it's a, uh, everything smoothed off to it that they could. You're gonna always have a couple holes and stuff like that in this particular style, but uh, Amazing work. And Bauhaus makes really good stuff. I really like them. Uh, they seem to be a really good company. They get their stuff together. Nice, good customer service. Um, before we put the skid in, though, however, uh, we talked about these screws. And if you remember, I told you in the bag, um, it had the, the nuts that came with it. What we're going to do is, while our, all the links are undone, now is the easiest time to do this. We're going to go ahead and put our nuts onto these because these are no longer in use. All they're doing is holding the um, floorboards on our, our sliders essentially. So Now you can go about this two different ways. You can either use needle nose or if you have a four way wrench you can use it as well. Uh, either one works just fine. 
if you actually look and see what you're doing, the needle nose works just fine too. Uh, having troubles. There we go. And you don't have to kill these screws. Uh, remember, you're just holding plastic to metal, so just snug them down and you're good to go. It's so much easier to do this part now, I feel, because I feel after you get the links in there, then you're just fighting the links. Um, so, this is so nice. And honestly, the big uh, C channel of this frame makes this easy to at least get your fingers in. I can actually fit my full fingernail uh, widthwise into the frame of this truck. It's definitely large. Uh, don't know if it's necessarily a good thing, it's, but in the case of trying to get big fingers in, it's a good thing. Alright, we did those two with the needle nose. And we'll do the other two with the wrench, just to give you both ways. And uh, if the Red Cat Gen 8 is the only truck you have, uh, unfortunately, um, they don't come with this wrench, which I found extremely odd, because in all my years of um, RCing, I've never bought a new vehicle that did not come with a wrench. Uh, this is what I'm talking about. If you have never seen one before, um, so it is so much easier to do stuff like this with it. <laughs> this is such a good tool, uh, and obviously it's really made it does your wheels as well so if you gotta change tires or whatever it makes it a lot nicer than trying to go get a socket set or something of that nature fits in some really tight spaces too so all right so that's what them four nuts are for that come in the bag Now we can put our skid in. Um, the skid is easy to put in, easy to remember. Uh, the only spot you have one of these, this is for the top link for the front. So you only have one. The, the two of these that are in, that's for the rear. So this is the front. The front of the truck is over that direction. So we're going to just pop that into place. And just the same as the old one come out the new one pops in. Now what I like to do I think at least what I'm going to do is put the middle screws that I showed you into place first. Let's see. Oh my. A little bit of pressure but I'm telling you them screws are going in very very nicely. I I almost feel like the the glass filled nylon is smoother on the screws than what the the normal um, blend is, or what they were using. Let's see if this side is. Hold on, I got a little bit more pressure to get that one to bite and dig, but after that, I mean, it's pretty smooth sailing. Very, very nice. Nope, oh, bumped the camera. See, pros don't do that. I am definitely not a pro. Okay, now that we've done that, we can get our links into place for the bottom. And uh, I definitely noticed that link just slides right in there. It's 
definitely easier than the original. That one in a little bit. Yeah, it seems to be. I haven't got to the other side, but at least it's pushing. Yeah, it went right in through there. A little pressure to get that to start, but uh, so nice. Uh, the big thing is to make sure you don't uh, you don't bind your drive shaft somewhere you don't want it. A little pushing to get that one through, but she went. All right, let's see. I am putting pressure onto it. If you can't tell by the, but not not terrible. And after it bites, it's just kind of smoothly cruising through it so that's that's not bad at all we're going to do this entire skid change as well as the entire rebuild of the truck so it's going to be a long video uh, you guys were cool with that so that's the way we're going to roll with them uh, just so you know uh, there's three holes on the bottom of this you need to be for factory length for factory wheelbase you need to be in the middle holes. So, so you have one, two, three, middle hole is factory. One, two, three, middle hole is factory. So, and that goes for the top and the bottom uh, lengths. So, just so you're aware, if you forget where they were at, you just went in, dug in, and ripped into it. Uh, number one, awesome job, congratulations. <laughs> Definitely like motivation. Uh, number two, it's not a big deal. You can either watch this video or just pull your manual out. So, either way, we'll get you what you need. I really, really, really appreciate everybody's uh, feedback. Um, you guys watching this stuff. Uh, it amazes me to be truthful with you. Middle hole. And... Same deal with this. A little pressure. Get hung up there a little bit. I'm just kind of putting a little bit of pressure on it. Nothing extreme. It's it's creeping through. It's not. Nope. There we go. Now we're digging. Nice. Do not over tighten them, obviously. Uh, just snug them up. Just remember these are uh, toy trucks, or little tiny trucks, so we don't need to uh, full size tighten this stuff down. So. Alright. If you have to go get a torque wrench, I'm probably going to say you went a little too far. <laughs> so let's go ahead and we'll get this one in this is our last bottom link a little bit of pressure uh, just like I say watch your your um, sliders and your angles uh, I'm, I was a little hesitant to do it with the MIPs even but if, if you don't have high quality uh, wrenches tools do not try this you will strip them screws out like nothing i pretty much was playing with fire doing it for you guys that way but uh, it's just a little quicker and a little easier so now we're ready to flip um big thing to remember is do not get your line drive lines uh, jammed up in the links whenever you do it put the screws in now in this design there is no nut on the inside of these uh, so they just made the plastic beefy so uh, as we thread these in there's no more nut to deal with so that's that's a positive thing that's awesome so our axles are going to rotate into place just like so and we're going to put our screws back in place
middle hole on these, like I said earlier. I'll show you here in a second. Okay. Our middle hole would be right there. See, one, two, three. So middle holes in the middle. Same way here, we're in the middle already. So, nothing to it. It was a good idea for Red Cat to uh, make the wheelbase adjustable like that. Um, definitely on the back. So, kind of gives you a bigger notch here than what I would prefer. But um, at the same time, it's not a terrible thing. So, you know, we can hang with it, we can deal with it. One. A little bit of pressure, just like all the other ones are done. I love this material though. You know that moment you, you say, man, I wish uh, they'd make everything else I already bought in that material and I'd buy it all over again? Well, this is that time. <laughs> okay. Now. We have all the links back together again. We are down to the drive line. So, now, that being said, get this in there the right direction. So, that's the way it's going to sit now. If you notice, this piece right here is raised up. In the original one, it was. It was up a little compared to this side, but nothing like it is now. Now it's got a major, uh, major rise to it. And what that done is change the uh, way, the angle that this sits in there, and it brought this part up from the bottom. That's how they got rid of your bulge. How they really reduced how dramatic that was. Um, the, I'm just, I love it. It's amazing. Uh, I can already tell you, without question, it's going to make a difference, especially in mine. So, now before we do anything, what we're going to do is take the male side of our new drive shaft, put some blue Loctite on it, and we're going to go ahead and attach it to the transmission. For our current time right now, we're not going to tear the transmission apart or shim anything or do anything uh, other than just we're really just putting this drive shaft on. We'll deal with the play that's in that a little bit later. A uh, little blue Loctite. We don't need that much. Dab will do you. Insert that. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and prep the female drive shaft. Just getting locked tight on the set screw for it so it's ready. And we can go ahead and just put it one, two. The transfer case. Nice and snug, don't over tighten it. We do not need to strip anything. We are done with the blue Loctite for now, for this project. So, now we talked about phasing with this particular drive shaft, so it has to be phased. Now, with the lengths, as you can see, this drive shaft is a heck of a lot longer than that drive shaft. So, what we're going to do is go ahead 
and put this front one together. I'm going to go ahead and throw the rear one together. Since that's our shortest drive shaft, that will be our last drive shaft. And obviously, we need to make sure that it is in phase. Because if not, this whole thing was for nothing. All right, look at that. We are perfectly phased. I love it. Beautiful. Now we're going to take our four screws. All four of these screws are the factory screws. They are all the same length. And um, they are also the same length as the shorter screws that went through down here. So uh, Red Cat did a pretty decent job of keeping screw size uh, somewhat common not completely all over the place so some of them obviously you need to have a longer screw or a smaller diameter screw here or there I mean sometimes just what you're doing you have to do it that way but and these screws are going in pretty good as well a little pressure and pushing down but nothing dramatic Yeah, that in-phase drive shaft will take a lot of the impact that the um, that, that out-of-phase one was given to the transfer case and the transmission. Uh, it's going to be a big improvement for it. That could single-handedly be, on well, my particular truck, since it was out-of-phase, could have been possibly the best upgrade I could have done for it. So our transmission's back into place. Now we're going to reinstall our battery tray. Now my ESC fell off. Uh, I don't own shelf queens so and it fell off just from wear and tear and running it. Um, now driving time wise I don't have a ton on this truck to be honest with you. I was somewhat uh, saving it for getting that drive shaft done so uh, one note there's only one long screw for the battery tray and it goes in the side I'll show you where it goes so a little pressure these ones here a little bit tougher to get it started um, the screws a little bit less I don't know it's a little different I feel so now these short uh, screws there we go these short screws are a little bit uh, they're all three the same size and um, so you can't really mess them up. That one's going in there. This one here's already been in, so yeah, it just kind of flies in there because that's just plain plastic from the uh, transmission. And uh, 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 that screw stayed in its hole. I was wondering why I had uh, one screw unaccounted for. So that one. does not want to start. There we go, it bit. That's after they're, they're starting, they're kind of... Now, I work with screwdrivers and hand tools all day long, so um, plastic really doesn't give me that much resistance. So it may be pretty simple or easy for me, and it may not be quite that easy for you. It depends on how much you do or what your your normal habits are.
Hopefully you weren't looking at my hand completely the entire time. Holy mackerel. I just now noticed that. See, you should look in your screen once in a while while you're recording and doing videos. That would be a little bit more professional. <laughs> well, we got that sitting there. I'm going to go ahead and plug this ESC back into that. Uh, obviously, if your ESC is still glued on or taped on, um, you can actually just lay this battery tray off to the side and do everything. You don't technically need to remove it. But mine had fallen off, and honestly, I just push it back on and run it, and it just dangles in there, and I could really care less if it stops working, to be truthful with you, because it's not going to be in there very long. Hint for the build series. So, and uh, try to get this in the camera. Uh, you can see where that screw, that's the long screw. I told you I'd tell you where it goes. Uh, that's the long one. So. And we have no parts left over. <laughs> Good for us. <laughs> so, yeah. It's done. Major improvements, uh, both in the drive line as well as in the clearance on the bottom. So, big thank you, everybody. Uh, the subscriber count, which I look at, but it's not my driving force by any stretch of the imagination, uh, has been going up. Thank you all. I appreciate it. I really do. Uh, keep keep hanging in there. Keep watching. I know there's gaps between my videos, and that's unfortunately the way it's got to be. I don't have much choice in it. Um, I can't do YouTube all the time. So, But uh, I really appreciate you watching. Please tell your friends. Maybe they'll learn something. Maybe they'll pick something up. Maybe they'll teach me something. So uh, enjoy the hobby. Get the kids out. Get them involved 110%. Um, help each other out. Do not down each other. Please help everybody.